Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Ivona Baricevi Jones. Uh, currently, I'm a Donald O'Donoghue Renal Research Center Manager. Uh, I started working at Research and Innovation and NCA in October last year. Uh, but uh, by education, I'm a scientist with a lot of experience in laboratory research. And during the last five to seven years, I also uh, went more into uh, research management, uh, uh, laboratory manager ma management, scientific project management. So somehow this role nicely merges uh, all my skills. As you can see, I will be talking today about the Donald O'Donoghue Renal Research Center. Uh, Center. It's an uh, inauguration uh, legacy to Donald, uh, current, our current research trends, and also about future plans. So the outline of my talk is that I would like to uh, mention and remind everybody about who was Professor Donald O'Donoghue. Uh, about Donald O'Donoghue Renal Research Center inauguration that took place on the 8th of March, about current strengths of the center and also about the future plans. So who was Professor Donald O'Donoghue? He, uh, he was the leader in renal medicine in the UK. Uh, he graduated from the University of Manchester in 1980s and he was appointed as a consultant, re consultant renal physician in 1992. At the time, uh, at the place where is now Sulphur Royal Hospital, it was a Hope Hospital. So he started in Ho Hope Hospital and uh, later on he was promoted also to professor in renal medicine. Uh, he established and led the England's uh, first managed clinical network that was Greater Man Ma Manchester Renal Network. But also during his outstanding career, uh, he, he took many very important roles. Uh, I will mention only a couple of them. Uh, so he led the implementation of the Renal National Service Framework as National Director of Kidney Care at the Department of Health. He was a president of the Renal Association and he, he was chair of trustee of Kidney Care UK since 2016. Unfortunately, he died from COVID-19 in January uh, 2021. So the new Renal Research Centre is called Donald O'Donoghue Renal Centre uh, in legacy to Professor O'Donoghue. Uh, to all his effort to improve patients' care, patients' treatment and diagnosis, and all his outstanding research contrib contributions. The inauguration of the centre took place on the 8th of March at Sulphur Royal at Mayo Building, and uh, we must admit that we had an amazing um, uh, audience uh, at the Mayo Building, probably around uh, almost 100 people attending inauguration and many more via webinar. Uh, the opening of the centre and also um, its plans uh, were very welcomed by Donald's family because among all the attendees of the inauguration was Donald's wife and his uh, three children. As you can see on the next slide, uh, on the left hand side, you can see the, the agenda of the opening of the centre many important and many uh, very well established and eminent uh, professor and uh, experts in uh, renal medicine from the UK participated there. Uh, the opening of the centre uh, was performed by Professor Philip Kalra, uh, that is the director of the centre, and it was followed by the talk of Professor John Feely, uh, that was long-term Donald's friend and colleague, uh, because he knew Donald for 41 years when they started working together at the Leicester University Hospitals. Uh, our clinical director for renal services, Dr. Dimitris uh, Polikakos, uh, also gave the talk that was uh, very important relating to the uh, very collaborative work within the renal department, uh, and that was mainly um, proved during COVID pandemic. Smita Sinha, a national clinical director, uh, recorded a talk uh, and also gave uh, important contribu contribution to the opening. 
one of the key aims and let's say uh, strategies of the center will be to get involved into research everyone that is interested to get involved uh, bearing that in mind, we are really also uh, proud that Professor Helen Harris, that is Professor of Nursing, recently appointed um, at uh, Salford University, also took, uh, uh, took part in inauguration and she also talked about the efforts that we will be putting uh, in getting involved more uh, nurses and more uh, midwives and allied um, health professionals. However, there were representative also of UK Kidney Association. So we had the president, Professor Paul Cockwell, that gave talk, but also Sandra Corey, that was the chief executive of uh, Kidney Research UK. At the end of the inauguration, as one of the concluded marks, they were by NCA medical director, Dr. Rafiq Badir. And we are very proud that uh, we can uh, follow his thoughts and that we can also uh, that we were uh, that we had him around at the end of the inauguration uh, because uh, his statement was very important for all of us at the Donald Center. So he said that pioneering approach Donald O'Donoghue and colleagues led has brought us to where we are today. Our strength comes from our people and hope his legacy will live on within the department he helped build, uh, build and the wider trust. And that is actually the biggest uh, treasure or the biggest legacy from Professor Donald O'Donoghue. Uh, it's not only the team that he built or he helped build within, uh, within the Sulphur Royal Hospital, but it's also all his ideas and vision uh, that he developed during his outstanding career. I already mentioned that the director of the center is Professor Phil Calra, that most of you know very well, but I would like to point out a couple of important moments in Phil's career and um, how I outstanding actually it is. So Phil qualified from Cambridge University and St. Thomas's Hospital in London and became a consultant nephrologist at Salford in 1995. Uh, he is a honorary professor at University of Manchester and visiting professor at MMU, uh, director of research and innovation, and since recently he is also director of the Donald Donoghue Renal Research Centre. So to make it a bit easier for uh, for my talk, uh, so I'm using the abbreviation DRRC for the uh, centre. So he had many previous academic roles. Uh, some of them I will try to mention, and that is academic vice president of UK Renal Association, national NIHR, CRN lead for kidney trials, and many others. So together with Donald's legacy, uh, we have to mention also Phil's legacy, because his legacy is also in developing and building all the team and all the strength within Mm, the team of uh, uh, consultants, renal consultants uh, at Sulphur Oil. He helped to educate and also to supervise uh, 27 of PhD AMD students at University of Manchester. So 20 of them are currently hospital ho consultants and 12 of them are still working within the team at uh, Sulphur Oil Hospital. And I have to point out here uh, because when you work in research, the only thing at the end of the day that is rewarding are publications. Uh, it is amazing, as you can see, 320 peer review publications that um, Phil published up to now. Um, and uh, we have to be proud of that. And that also gives us um, amazing foundations to build up the center and to uh, give us a strength to educate more uh, people towards their PhDs and MDs. Going a little bit in the past, uh, how everything started. As I said at the beginning, when uh, Donald started, it was a Hope Hospital uh, in the 1990s. At that point, it was only one consultant. Uh, there were Phil Kara was the third one that was uh, appointed. Uh, research outputs, they were very basic, basic uh, 
in a format of case reports that uh, that means like really short summaries of the uh, findings on a couple of pages, not many details. Um, only one substantial or let's say extensive paper on AC inhibitor is due induced complications in uh, renal vascular disease. And uh, only one MD student that was supported by the uh, department funds. Later on, uh, between 2000 and 2010, uh, the department developed uh, and more in, in the area or in the field of renovascular disease, uh, but also appointment of Rob Foley uh, helped to start going more towards uh, non-dialysis CKD cohorts. Uh, more grants were obtained from Kidney Research UK and British Heart Foundation and also more research fellows were trained towards MDs and PhDs. In a period between 2010 uh, up to now, 13 more SPRs completed PhD and MD under supervision of Professor Carla and uh, other colleagues within the uh, renal department. Uh, six consultant colleagues have progressed to primary or uh, as co-supervisors. Co 13 of 23 current consultant appointments uh, basically undertook research to higher degree in this department and that is that is making actually a uh, very important foundation for the center. Uh, research portfolio also extended. Uh, now we are proud that we participate in 15 active research teams. Uh, we also developed the Donald Donohue Renal Research Center and we have many other plans to come. Uh, we would like to initiate a nurse-led research programs and also active PPI development uh, with the aim to undertake patient-directed research teams. We now have established also the RRC Steering Committee. Uh, steering Committee has uh, officially four uh, meetings per year uh, where we discuss and basically where we guide the key strategic directions and the uh, uh, leadership of the center. Uh, we are interested to identify and to prioritize new research topics and direction of the center. Uh, we would like to extend collaborations and uh, more opportunities with academia, with the uh, commercial and other partners. Uh, we want to collaborate more with the local university, with Salford University, with the um, MMU, with University of Manchester. Uh, we want to also recruit more uh, staff. Uh, when we say staff, also um, clinical research fellows, uh, but also we would like to provide support and to development of research careers uh, across the board. So that's the reason why we want to try to engage and support everyone who would like to take part in research. We are very proud that one of the members of our steering committee is a person with lived experience in kidney disease. And uh, we hope that that will be the way uh, to have more direct communication with the PPI group and also to uh, hear their voices and to direct our research uh, towards the teams that they also would like to be developed in the future. So what is our current infrastructure? I was appointed in October last year and uh, since then we started working intensively on our strategic of thinking about more uh, application for grants and also uh, a building of our web pages underway. Our infrastructure is completely self-funded. Uh, in the last 12 months we have a grant income around one million pounds. Uh, we are very proud that we have 15 research active consultants. 10 consultants currently have research sessions in their job plan, so that means that they are active on a weekly basis. Uh, five current research fellows are undertaking PhD. We have one academic clinical lecture 
We have now Professor of Nursing Helen Hurst appointed in October last year. We have three nurses currently involved in research. Uh, four research fellows completed PhD in last three years. And as I said uh, before, the most important when you are doing research is the outcome. So we have 45 peer-reviewed publications in last 12 months and 125 publications in last three years. Our current resources and our current assets. assets. Sulfur kidney study that most of you are aware of is one of our biggest research assets. Why? So the collection of samples started in 2002 under the name of crisis and then later on was changed towards a sulfur kidney study. Up to now we have 3,800 consented participants that are largely non-dialysis EKD patients, but recently we have a one small sub-collection of around 200 patients that are also dialysis patients. So what does that mean? That means that within our uh, within the biorepository, we have more than 65,000 uh, stored biosamples. When I say biosamples, we are talking here about plasma samples, serum samples, but also whole blood that can be used for DNA isolation. Uh, we have a very solid and extensive data, clinical data, biographic data that is behind these samples and that is actually bringing the biggest value uh, to these samples. Um, we are currently developing a bit better uh, costing model that will actually cost for all the resources within a biorepository, but also everyone else that is uh, involved in the mm, maintaining and actually allowing this, uh, this study uh, to, be, uh, to be handled properly when we have any of collaborators, either academics or industry partners inter in interested in these samples. In addition to this, we have also renovascular data database that is a real world data collection for more than 1000 patients that are managed over three dec decades. We have also transplant database, real world data from more than 900 samples since 2000 and also national and international trial participation. So what are we doing now? What we would uh, do to do in the future? So what you can see on this slide, uh, we are doing it already, but we also want to want to expand more. So currently we have collaborations and partnerships uh, with all the local universities and with a lot of pharma companies, uh, but we definitely want to do more because we know that we can do more. Uh, at the moment, as you can see, there is a very important uh, part of collaboration with the Biomedical Research Centre and uh, that is the uh, 65 uh, million uh, pounds project that started in December last year and we are uh, very happy that the cardiovascular team uh, has its own part within, uh, within BRC. Uh, we have already collaboration with Manchester Metropolitan University on the um, MIR biomarkers in uh, CKD progression. Uh, this is basically looking at the uh, micro uh, RNAs that are encoded by uh, MIR genes uh, that are actually very important because they, they take important part in gene expression of most of the genome. So looking at this can give us basically a very important insight, various um, uh, physiological and also pathological conditions. So Collaborations with pharma companies already exist, uh, but we will also uh, try to do more. So this slide is only trying to point out even a bit more towards the legacy, uh, key legacy in research. Uh, you can see how many people completed PhD uh, within a, a renal department in the uh, last 20 years. But even more important, all these people that are highlighted in red, they're still there. So they have a lot of experience. Uh, they, in most of them, are still uh, research active. This is to 
to mention that one of our recent achievements, and that is the achievement from the last week, actually, uh, our paper uh, was uh, accepted for publication in clinical proteomics. Uh, you will hear a bit more in the next couple of weeks uh, because it's still not available online, uh, but it will be soon. So it is a work funded by uh, MRC grant uh, nurture project. And actually, in this project, we were looking at the uh, different biomarkers uh, uh, that will distinguish uh, patients that are stable patients and rapidly progressing or deteriorating patients. Uh, we managed to find the biomarker in this project that was a discovery project on around uh, a bit more than 400 uh, patients from SKS study. Uh, so this actually work will open a lot of new opportunities because next next step will be uh, to validate these uh, these markers that were discovered, but also to think more uh, how we can um, connect and join the data from proteomics work and also genomics work uh, that uh, we are at the moment uh, gathering the data. So what are the future plans? The future plans are, of course, to uh, increase focus on patient directing research teams, uh, to focus more on health inequalities that uh, you could hear more in uh, one of the previous hot topics when uh, Jessa Deek uh, talked about it, because she is our uh, RNI research lead on equalities together with uh, Professor Smita Sinha. Uh, but we also want to uh, initiate more nurse-led uh, research projects and uh, internships. Uh, we will be appointing, appointing this year uh, for more clinical research fellows, and we are actually interviewing for them uh, this week. Uh, we are pal planning even more projects that will be uh, around mental health. Uh, we are aiming um, for more uh, grant applications uh, to NIHR and KR UK uh, in the uh, next months and years. And uh, the most important for the end that we would like to encourage more colleagues uh, to participate in research activities. Uh, enthusiasm and efforts are never blocked. Uh, what, what does that mean? Uh, please, it doesn't matter how uh, how small idea is, or even if you think at that point that is not relevant. Please come come to us and and talk with us, uh, because it's always from small um, ideas or uh, a couple of lines in a paper that you read, uh, you may think about uh, something that we can do in the future. So please come to us and and talk with us, and we will be able to help and to develop your ideas.